evening, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to Charo African Methodist Men's Day Revival this year of 2022. We come tonight to praise God, to give Him some praise. We come to let everybody know that just because it's a Wednesday night, God is still in the blessing business. So, God, so people, I ask y'all to join in with us. Sing with us. Clap your hands wherever you are. Stomp your feet. It's all right to scream and holler, but continually have the praises of God in your mind and in your mouth. So now we will go on with our program. before you. Lord, we prepared ourselves in so many ways to come to this night of worship and praise. But God, we can't do a thing unless you come. So Lord, we come before you confessing that we are not able to do everything we said we would be able to do. But what we're doing, Lord, we're doing in faith, knowing that the men of Shiloh are here on service. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to worship this night. We thank you, Lord, for a revival night that's going to enhance our spirits and those of those who are with us. We thank you for the audience, both in-house and those who are on Zoom. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to bring unto you a new revival, one that's never been done before, but the men of shower have put their time and their hearts and their minds into it. So God, we come before you with the praises, remembering the works you've done for us and how you've been good to us all these years. We don't take it without a sip of understanding, Lord, that it's you who has provided all these things for us, and we ask you, Lord, that we would do it just one more time. Come on, Lord, stop by. Be with us. Revive our souls, our minds, our hearts. Revive us in a way that when we leave here, we will be able to say that we've been in touch with you and we worship with you this, this, this very night. We thank you, God, and ask you for the success of this night. Some soul will be saved. Somebody will come saying that I spoke with the Lord last night and he answered me. Some soul will come saying I saw the Lord last night in the men of shallow. Some soul will come saying, thank you, God, for what you've done for me this night. God, we thank you for the opportunity, and we pray without understanding. We pray without, and we pray, Lord, that you will be with us all the night long. We give our thoughts and our minds and our efforts over to you. The songs have been prepared. 
the preachers have been prepared. The minds of the people are being prepared. And all that we need you to do is stop by and join with us in this hour of time and worship. As we thank you, God, for this day and this hour. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being kind to us. Thank you for being us, granting us grace. Thank you for the healing that you've given to us. Thank you for all that you've done. Because, Lord, we realize that without you we cannot do a thing. But when you stop by, all things become possible. And, Lord, we thank you. Now come on by, Lord, be with the men of Shiloh in this worshipful night of praise, as we remember that it's you that we serve, and not we ourselves. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for coming out for Men's Day of Revival. And the men's, Charles Men theme this year is Men's Faith Rooted in Being in Christ. Our scripture comes from Colossians 2, verses 6 and 7. And it reads as, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Now's the time that we all can participate in the service. Now's the time to come to give back to God some of what he's given us, because we have to remember all that we have belongs to the Lord. And he just asks to give a little bit back to him tonight. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we just magnify your holy and glorious name. Father, we thank you for this offering that we're about to collect. Thank you, God bless those who could give and those who wanted to give, but for whatever reason they can, and be with those who are on Zoom, and we will have on a screen how to give online. Amen. privilege to introduce tonight's speaker. He is someone I'm very familiar with because he happens to be my youngest brother. He is highly educated and well res respected within his community. Dr. Keith Savage is the senior servant of First Baptist Church of Manassas, Virginia since August of 2002. Dr. Savage earned his undergraduate degree from Washington U University in St. Louis, Missouri. His Master of Divinity degree from Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology of Virginia Union University. And his Doctor of Ministry degree from Uni United Theological Seminary in Dayton, Ohio. Dr. Savage continues to, to travel across the country and around the world as an ambassador for Christ on missionary, missionary journeys. He is an author who has contributed chapters and articles to various published Christian, Christian books and journals. Dr. Keith Savage is married to the love of his life, Benita, and they are proud parents of two adult children, Keith II and Kayla a daughter-in-law, Janice Reed Savage, and a grandson, Keith III. So let us get ready, get ready for our dynamic revivalist, Dr. Keith Anthony Savage, Pat <coughs> senior servant of First Baptist Church of Manassas, Virginia. Hear ye him. So after the singing of the Simonic Selection, the next voice you will hear will be that of Keith Anthony Savage. Senior Servant of First Baptist Church of Manassas, Virginia.
Shiloh AME, thank you so much. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord for this Men's Day Revival. I'm so grateful to be here with you. Uh, as you heard already in the bio, I'm Reverend Dr. Keith Savage. I'm the senior servant here at First Baptist Church, Manassas, Virginia. More importantly to you, I'm the baby brother of uh, your, my big brother, uh, uh, but your Men's Day uh, Chairman, Teddy Savage, Ted Savage. Uh, and so I'm so grateful for this invitation, this honor to be able to be with you virtually, virtually at this time uh, to celebrate your Men's Day in 2022. 
Uh, we've got two messages. Tonight's going to be fairly simple and short. It's revival. It's in the evening. I know it's in the middle of the week. You've got things that you need to do. And so I don't want to keep you long. But I do want to, first of all, just praise God for this men, men's day at Shiloh AME. I praise God for all the men of Shiloh AME as you continue to do what thus saith the Lord in your life. And so we praise God for that. Come on, let's praise God for your pastor, your new pastor, Daryl Ford. We praise God for Pastor Daryl Ford as he as your new assignment there as your pastor at Shiloh AME. I have not met him in person, but we have talked on the phone. And so he sounds like an amazing man of God. And I know he's going to do great things uh, as pastor and people there at Shiloh AME. Also want to give greeting to a whole bunch of family members who are there at Shiloh AME. Again, my brother Teddy, my brother Wade, my sisters in love, Reverend Marguerite Savage, Reverend Andrea Savage. And so to all of the savages and the Sewards uh, who are there, we are family and we run deep there. And so we praise God from whom all blessings flow. It is Men's Day Revival here at Shiloh AME. And so we are going to praise God tonight. Uh, and we're going to look at a familiar text, but I'm hopefully maybe I'll come at it from a different perspective than maybe how you've seen this text. Or if not, I'm going to amen what you may already know about this text. Tonight, uh, we're going to be looking at the Gospel of Matthew. We're going to be in chapters one and two, and I will get there in a moment. But I also want to bring you greetings uh, from the first lady and the first love of my life, uh, Benita Flower Savage. She gives you greetings. The entire First Baptist uh, Church Manassas family gives greetings as well to each and every one of you. And again, I am just honored. I want us to look at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, and then we're going to go to Matthew, chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 13 through 15 and 19 through 23, and I'm going to read them from the New International Version. Matthew, chapter, we're going to start in Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, and I'm going to read it from the New International Version. Hear the word of the Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and did not want to expose her pup to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Amen. If you will, go with me to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 13 through 15 and then skip down to 19 to 23. Matthew chapter 2, beginning at verse 13, again from the New International Version. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said, take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt, I called my son. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who are trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child 
and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets. He will be called a Nazarene. Listen, for the moments that are ours as men of God, as brothers uh, in Christ, as those who are, uh, are trying to get it right. I want you to, if you're by yourself uh, and looking at this, I want you to get ready to speak into the atmosphere. If you're with somebody, get ready to look at each other and tell one another the title of God's message for us tonight. On this first night, tell one another, a man for my generation. A man for my generation. A man for my generation. Pray with me, brothers and sisters. Father God, Elohim Adonai, Lord God, we thank you that you continue to call us and to bless us, to purpose us, to empower us, to place us where we need to be as men and women of you. We thank you on this Men's Day Revival, Lord, that you are calling men to, to hear your word, to, to stand in your power, to be faithful and, and true to who they are in you as you continue to shape us and remold us and to orient us and even at times to disorient us that we might hear you clearly to be the men that you've called us to be. Lord, we're looking for your standard, not ours. We're, we're looking for your faith and not ours. We're looking for your hope and not ours. We're looking for your strength and not ours, that we might be all that you have called us to be. Have your way, Lord God. Speak to us. Give us eyes to see and, and ears to hear, heart to understand, and the will to say yes to yours. Hear our prayer, for it is always our praise. In the name of your Son, who is our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We always ask it and pray. And all who agree tonight, we gladly say, Amen. Amen. If you noticed in that text, there are a couple times where it says that God, <clears throat> excuse me, God said so, and Joseph got up. One of the things that I want to hopefully encourage you tonight is that tonight is just not a time to get information. It's a time to hear that God says so and to then get up and do something about it. That everything that God tells us and God gives us a reason to celebrate and honor men today is because we are men who don't just stay on the sofa. We are men who don't just stay on the couch. We are men who don't just stay on the sideline, but we are men who get what God is trying to tell us and we get up and do what thus saith the Lord. Now, I, I'm not coming to you with rose colored colored glasses, if you will, because I understand that this is not always easy, but it is always necessary. The late John Lewis said that sometimes we've got to get in good trouble, necessary trouble. And what I believe he's saying is that oftentimes when we hear God tell us that this is the righteous thing to do, this is the just thing to do, this is the faith thing to do, this is the love thing to do, then we need to do just like we see in this scripture, hear what thus saith the Lord, and then get up and go be about the Lord's business. Be about the Lord's business in our own personal walk with God. Be about the Lord's business in our marriages. Be about the Lord's business in our families. Be about the Lord's business in our churches. Be about the Lord's business in our communities. Be about the Lord's business in our state. Be about the Lord's business in this world. Here it is that we are celebrating, Shiloh. We're celebrating and honoring men today. And, and I want you to take a pause right now. I can't hear you, but somebody ought to praise God for men of God today. Come on. Somebody ought to praise God. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to be praising God for the men of God today. Oh, we're not perfect, but we are worthy to say, Lord, thank you for the men of God in my life. They haven't made, they haven't made everything right, but, but they're doing as best as they know how in your spirit and in your love. Here's what we got to understand is that progress is the purpose of men. 
I tell, and I've said this to my own congregation at first, here at First Baptist Shiloh, I, I mean, I say this all the time, and I say it publicly because I need my son to know this, that my purpose, part of my purpose, is to make my son, Keith Savage II, a better Christian, a better disciple of Christ, a better man of God, a better husband, a better father, a better father, a better man in the community than I am. It's all about progress. And it's to look at our lives and say, Lord, thank you for the progress you made in my life. But if you've allowed me to not only be a man of God, but also to have a young man or now he's a young adult man, but I'm still being his father, that it's about progress to say, Lord, make me so I can mold and counsel him to be better than I ever was. Progress is the purpose of us as men who understand that moving backwards is not an option today. Men always seek to improve and rise to new levels in the Lord. And here's what we need to remember is that we are always seeking to improve and in the lives of other men, whether it's your flesh and blood or just somebody that you can mentor, our job is to seek to improve their lives that they might rise to new levels in the Lord as we are. And so we take pride in saying that we are men. We are black men and, and we love the legacy that God is showing us. And like all men here tonight, we refuse to be invisible. God didn't make us invisible. We're here and, and we're active and we do our best in the Lord. And it's why I love Joseph here in this gospel of Matthew. Joseph, who we know in the New Testament, not the Old Testament Joseph. I'm talking about the New Testament Joseph who's engaged to Mary. God entrusts, look at this, God entrusts Jesus to a man who seemingly can't provide as his culture expected. He's not a political leader. He's not a prophet. Matter of fact, Matthew says Joseph is a descendant of David and in the spotlight in the divine plan as the adoptive father of the Messiah. Now that sounds like a whole bunch of big glorious things, but here's what I like about Joseph when you really look and, 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 and when you, you take the time to go, here's what you really see about Joseph because we don't know but so much. But what I like about Joseph is he's an ordinary man from an ordinary place in an ordinary time, just like you and me. Joseph is a carpenter and Jewish culture valued work, just like we do here. They value what? But you got to remember that Israel is under Roman occupation at this time. And from a Roman perspective, his job was a slave's profession. Any brothers in here where people look down at your job because they don't understand that it's not about the value that the culture puts on it, but it's the value that God has in your purpose on that job. Listen, God didn't create us that we might have these high fine and high paying jobs all the time. If you got that, God bless you. But that's not God's purpose. God is not going to say, hey, because you had a corporate CEO job or because you had a six figure or more job, you can come into the kingdom. God is not looking at the value of the work. God's looking at the value value of the worker. Here it is that from a Roman perspective, his job was a slave's profession. But, but here's what I like about Joseph. Joseph was confronted with the powers that be and the powers that were. These are powers who thrived on injustice and they thrived on violence and they, dry, they thrived on corruption. But in the middle of all that is a man. In the middle of all that is a father. In the middle of all that is a husband with a spirituality that clearly stood with God and God clearly stands with him. And when we look at Joseph's life, there are three things to know about Joseph to be celebrated in men of God tonight and I'm going to be done. Three things that we need to celebrate in ourselves as men of God as God continues to work through us. First thing that we've got to celebrate and understand as men of God, the things to know that we see in Joseph that we need to make sure we see in ourselves. The first thing is a man's faith, a man's faith prepares him for the unexpected. A man's faith prepares him for the unexpected. 
Every day we wake up. We wake up to the unexpected. We make plans, but only God can carry out what God's purpose has for us. But sometimes life hits us like a sledgehammer. Sometimes things come from out of left field. And here it is that Joseph faith made him open to God and to God's messengers. That's what it means to be a man of faith, that, that we remain open to God and to God's messengers. And here we see we see this in his treatment of his fiance, his his fiance. You know, her, her name is Mary. She's a teenager. We're not sure of Joseph's age. We know he's not too much older than her than Mary. So he may be an older teenager, or a man in his 20s. But he's got this teenage fiance, which was normal at the time and day of that culture. And Mary is pregnant. This pregnancy is unexpected because Mary and Joseph hasn't done, haven't had sexual relations that she could possibly even be pregnant. So Mary's pregnancy is an unexpected circumstance and situation. And if you are like most men, you, are, you have a fiance, you haven't had sexual intercourse and you find out she's pregnant. It wasn't Joseph's baby. But he knew the consequences facing a teenage girl who had sex before marriage. She was to be stoned to death. To Joseph, Mary's perceived sin didn't make her an outcast. And, and this is where we've got to be different than the world. Because the world says, you know what? Because of that, you gone. Be gone. I'm out of here. You out of here. But look, look what happens with Joseph. To Joseph, Mary's perceived sin didn't make her an outcast. It made her a candidate for God's grace. Oh, I, oh how many of us have had God's grace in our lives? But, but as men, we got to understand that if God has given you grace in your life, that you got to understand that those who mess up in their lives need to be candidates for God's grace. Joseph knew Mary deserved love and protection, not stoning. Look at Matthew chapter 1, verse 19. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law. Wait a minute, uh, uh, Pastor, I thought you said, Dr. Savage, I thought you said that they were engaged. Well, thank you for asking that question. In Hebrew law, in Hebrew tradition, once a man and woman are engaged for all intents and purposes under their engagement, they are seen as being married. That's why in the culture at that time, if you were engaged and you wanted to break off the engagement, you literally needed a certificate of divorce. So because Joseph and her husband, the text says, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet didn't want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind, watch that, to divorce her quietly. Before he received God's message, Joseph demonstrated faith in God that protected the dignity of Mary. How, we, how many brothers we need to say that the world needs to see that we are demonstrated a faith in God by protecting those whom God has united us with, yoked us with, with our, our wives, our fiancés, our children. If you are dating with your girlfriend to make sure that we are walking in faith and showing dignity to the women in our lives, our mothers, our sisters, our wives, our nieces, our fiancés, our girlfriends, or just female friends. Watch this. In a dream, an angel tells Joseph about Mary's pregnancy that Joseph, don't trip. My translation, not the Bible's. This was of divine origin. In other words, this is of the Holy Spirit. And what does Joseph do? Does he say, uh-uh, I'm not doing that? Does he cancel his previous plans of divorce? Yes, he does. He cancels his plans to divorce Mary and accepts God's truth. He accepts God's truth. It's not the world's truth, but he accepts God's truth. When you're a man of faith, we've got to accept God's truth in our life. And godly men have a faith willing to respond righteously. That's the first thing we got to understand. A man's faith prepares him for the unexpected. Here's the second thing. After understanding a man's faith prepares him for the unexpected, second thing, a man's love won't quit in tough times. A man's love won't quit in tough times. Look at Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 15. When they had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up. Remember, I told you about that. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So watch this. So he got up. 
The angel of God, this is, listen, that's just a messenger. He tells him, get up. So what does Joseph do? He got up. Brothers, anybody getting up tonight? Brothers, anybody getting up? God says, get up. Has anybody gotten up? God says, get up. Anybody getting up for righteous? Anybody getting up for love? So he got up and took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt where he stayed until the death of Herod. Sometimes it feels like we're running from one storm to the next as men of God. But just like Joseph, God chooses men willing to love God, love neighbor and love their families in hard times. Why? Because it's the love of God mingled with a love of family. It's a story of hope. God is looking for men to be those who get up and magnify the story of hope. Get up and stand up for righteousness. Get up and stand up for love. Get up and stand up for those who need to know that God loves them. Anybody, anybody get up men in this place tonight? Anyone who went to hear God and say, Lord, because you tell me to stand up, here I stand. I'm getting up and doing what you called me to do in the church, in the community, in my family, on my job, wherever you plant my feet. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you. So he got up. So he got up took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt. It's a command with a promise. God's in control. And because God's in control, Joseph understood troubles won't last always. And, and one day that we he will return. And, and we have to understand that selfish and cruel rulers, selfish and cruel powers and people don't get the last word in your lives. The mess up, the storms don't get the last word in your life. The earthquakes don't get the last word in your life. The issues don't get the last word in your life. The illnesses don't get the last word in your life. The problems don't get the last word in your life life God is in control and if God is in control he's Alpha and Omega that means he gets the first word he gets the last word and can I say it he gets if you allow it by faith all the words in between God is in control of our lives as men of God therefore Satan don't get the last word troubles don't get the last word why because Satan one day won't be here trouble won't last always but God will be here always and Jesus is our Alpha and Omega so make sure he got your first word and he got your last word man of faith prepares him for the unexpected a man's love won't fade in tough times here's the last one here's the last one a man's decision a man's decision looks to God for direction a man's decision looks to God for direction when it comes to being men of God, whether you are a young man, whether you are a newly married man, whether maybe you're a middle aged man or maybe you're a senior saint man, every part of the journey, a true man of God, I'm not speaking to the world, a true man of God makes decisions by looking to God's direction. Every time in my life where I have found myself making a bad, going in the wrong direction is because I wasn't looking to God for my decision. Sometimes, let's be honest, sometimes we make a decision and then really trying to get God just to rubber stamp or amen what we want to do. Lord, this is, the, this is my decision, so can you take me in that direction? But that's not how this works as men of God. We need to say, God, what is your direction so I know the right decision to make? So the first thing we need to seek is God's direction. And once we know God's direction, then we know the right decision to make. Look at Matthew chapter 2, verses 19 through 23 again. Look what it says. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So... Here it is. God gives direction. Now, here's Joseph's decision. So he got up and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. God gave direction and it made it then easy for Joseph as a man of faith to make the decision. So he got up, as the angel said, and took the child and his mother, as the angel said, and went to the land of Israel as the direction of the angel said. Now, 
Does that mean it's always going to go smooth? No, because look at verse 22. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there, having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. Joseph is divinely guided to make a decision that looks dangerous. He's got to make a he's, he's, he's being directed by God and God's giving direction. But that direction looks like he's going to have to make a decision that looks dangerous. Here's what we got to know. Here's what Joseph understood. The world is going to be the world. The world is still the world, but never forget God is working even in your darkest decision days, even when the decision looks dangerous, even when you don't see how it's going to work out, even when you don't know how bills are going to be paid, even how you don't know how things are going to make it. As God used Joseph, God will use you as men to carry out God's purpose for your generation, this generation and every generation, not through complicated strategies, but with a faith and a love ready to depend on God to do what God instructs us to do and to go where God leads us to go even when it's uncomfortable or dangerous how do we know because you got to understand this child that it was that Joseph was the not the biological father but he was really the adopted father that it is this child who would be called Emmanuel it is this child who would be known as Jesus it would be this child who would be known as the one who was the save us God's savior that Jesus when he came and became a man of God and said the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the good news that it would be this Jesus who said though it's uncomfortable father I'm willing to go to Calvary it'd be this Jesus to say even though it's dangerous I'm willing to go in your right direction to do what you called me to do it'd be this Jesus who would give us life that we might have a right to the tree of life it'd be this Jesus who would say that God so loved the world that he sent me that I might be your lamb of God who be the savior of the world it's this Jesus whom we celebrate it is this man who is the one who shows us the way is this man though he hung on Calvary's cross hung his head bled and died it is this man though he is buried in a tomb in a borrowed tomb it is this man on the third day rose with all power in his hand that he might be a man not just for his generation but every generation Jesus is our example and Joseph is the example that even when it's uncomfortable or dangerous you are a man for your generation. You were made for this. You were built for this. You are being discipled for this. And because of that, because you are faithful to this, you ought to be celebrated tonight. And so again, if you by yourself, get ready to say it again in the atmosphere. For the men, for the men, for the men. Ladies, I want you to praise God, but brothers, I want you to say it. Now that you understand, if you by yourself as a man of God, get ready to speak into the atmosphere. But, but if you are not by yourself as a man of God and there's another brother there or someone else who's just there with you, get ready to look at them. And brothers, I want you to say this. Why, sisters, you are just praising God. Brothers, say this. I'm a man for my generation. I'm a man for my generation. I'm a man for my generation. And come on, praise God. Come on, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're men for our generation and personalize it. You are a man. I am a man for my generation. Shallow and me. Brothers, happy Men's Day in this revival tonight. I look forward to being with you one more night. And we praise God from whom all blessings flow. May God continue to bless you and keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you and give you peace. There may be somebody here tonight and you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins. You finally realize that you are not an accident. You are not a mistake. You are not a burden. You are not a problem. But you are a man of God. Whatever your age is, whether you are in your teenage years or you are in your 90s, you are a man of God and everything in between and God has purpose for your life and I thank God that as God gives direction that you then make the decisions to do all that God has called you to do. If you are here tonight and you finally see that and say, yes, Lord, I receive you as Lord and God. 
Thank you, Jesus, for being the Lamb of God who takes away my sins. Thank you for being the one who redeems me that I might be in right relationship with God. I surrender. And like Thomas, I say, my Lord and my God. If that's you tonight, reach out to Shiloh AME and let them know that you have given your life to Christ and you want to walk with God in the way that Joseph and more importantly, Jesus has walked with the Father. Maybe you're already a child of God, but you don't have a church home and you are somewhere in the area where Shiloh AME is and you are looking for a church home. I know, I know they'd be more than happy to have you and to walk with you that you might eventually become part of the Shiloh AME body of Christ. Listen, I'm Dr. Keith Savage. I'm the senior servant here at First Baptist Church Manassas, Shiloh AME Church. It has been such an honor to be able to worship with you tonight. I thank God for you. Brothers, let's continue as we saw in the scriptures when God says, get up, let's get up and go because we are men for our generation. Father, thank you. Thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your love, for your direction, for your call and command, for all that you call us to do. Thank you for making us men of God, men of faith, men of love, men of hope for this generation in which we live. Lord, the world so needs to see you in us. And so we surrender ourselves that we might let our light shine, the light of the glory of you, Lord God. Now to you who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before your presence with exceeding joy. To you, our only wise God and Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forevermore. Let all the children of God together say, Amen. God bless you. I'm a man for my generation. Oh, do we not have a Holy Ghost good time? Thank you. Reverend Seth, for opening us up on this Wednesday night with that awesome word, a man, a man for my generation. Oh, what a blessed word, what a blessed word, and it's not the end. I can't wait till tomorrow, 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 we'll get to do the same thing again. So won't you come back tomorrow so we can worship and have a Holy Ghost good time with him. Oh, what a fellowship, oh, what a joy, joy divine as we continue to lean on his everlasting arms. So come on back. The benediction has been said. Have a great night. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow.